Hóum módulinn á söndag eftirmiddag. Þetta er ein módul på 11.300 tonn. Þetta er þessi dert störstu löft í löftuprogrammi í ár på Ekkofisk. Þetta er eftir svo var heiletekki sem skulum på plass. En 
ja, 110 Tonnen wäre ihr da. Und nun im Morgen so fick wir Generatormodul im Platz. Der war 620 Tonnen Luft. Und das, was wir nun ist, die Vorhalle, die andere Sia. Und da ist die Luft, die wir lieben. Ja, nun ist es nicht umsetzt auf die Installation an den neuen Hotel. Und der ging halt knirkefritt, akkurat auf den Plan. Und nun sehen wir bare vorwärts und glädern uns, dass wir flüte in auf den neuen Hotel. Und für die Produktion von 247. Und das markiert ich auch die Wünsche für den neuen Ecofisk. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mirko Stock, Intergraph Process Power and Marine Senior Vice President, Solutions and Strategic Alliances. Good morning. These were pretty cool, right? I hope uh, everybody is awake, uh, and I also hope that everybody had a really nice party uh, yesterday. Um, today. We want to talk about uh, the value of engineering information uh, uh, in, in, in the context of project execution, right? Yesterday was all about operational facilities. Today is going to be about uh, projects. Um, and I just want to tee out real quick. So this slide here, uh, you know, it shows a couple of uh, illustrative business processes that uh, Smart Plan Enterprise uh, underpins. So you have, uh, you know, capabilities from SPO, uh, from Smart Plan Materials, and from Smart Plan Construction. And the way you read that here uh, is basically it shows you uh, on, on the baseline of a $1 billion uh, project, you know, how much savings, um, you know, we believe can be achieved by these business processes. Uh, so, you know, pretty nice because if you add it all up, just these, these, uh, the, these, these illustrative business processes here, um, <clears throat> looking at 7% saving of total installed cost. So this is a great opportunity, uh, obviously. Um, and it is enabled by high quality uh, and change managed engineering information. So yesterday we saw uh, how that high quality engineering information can be created uh, for operational facilities. Today we want to talk about how we can do that during project execution. So but before we get started with that, let's just have a real quick look at the challenges that we you know, typically find uh, in major capital projects. Um, so typically we have you know, many different companies and, 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 and contributors in the mix. They all work in different locations. Uh, they work in, uh, in different time zones, in many cases 24 hours a day. Um, they work in parallel, oftentimes on the same project scope. And they, in many cases, are very different uh, in their degree of uh, um, you know, IT sophistication. So, you know, unfortunately, we are still very far away from a situation where everybody around that planet would use Smart Plant for everything we do. We're kind of trying to do our best to get there. But at this point in time, we're not there yet. Um, so the question really is, in that situation and environment, how do we create the high-quality engineering information that is required uh, to achieve these assets, uh, these, the, the benefits that you saw on the slide before? And instead of me trying to tell you, you know, how to do that, let's ask uh, some folks who have really done that. And with that, I'm more than pleased to welcome on stage uh, Sham Kumar from uh, Conoco Phillips and uh, Luciano Savadeski from ENI. Hi, <coughs> Verano. Nice to see you. Sham, you. good to see you. Have a seat. All right. Um, so, Sham, I suggest we get started by maybe you telling the audience a little bit, uh, you know, some of the business challenges. Um, that ConocoPhillips uh, have been facing in, in, in Norway. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah? Good, thank All you. Right. Okay. Let's do the roll. <coughs> well, thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. As Mirko mentioned, my name is Sham Kumar. I am the uh, Engineering Manager for ConocoPhillips Deep Water Asset Development Division, uh, based in Houston. But prior to that, I spent five years in Norway uh, as the Engineering Manager for Norway Capital Projects and as Project Manager on uh, two new build platforms. Uh, ConocoPhillips 
is um, the world's largest independent exploration production company based on proven reserves and uh, daily production. And what I mean by independent is that we strictly are limited to exploration and production. We don't own refineries or deal in uh, refined product. We're active in exploration and production in 27 countries around the world. We have 18,500 employees. The uh, locations that are circled on the map are the locations in which we've utilized Smart Plant. And Smart Plant is not a uh, corporate mandate for ConocoPhillips, so each of the business units uh, has its own story as far as implementing Smart Plant tools. It's the Norway story that I'll, I'll share with you today. ConocoPhillips is the operator of the Ecofis platform, which is shown on the, on the slide there at the very top. It's, the, it's a series of bridge link platforms. It started production about 43 years ago, and it's the, uh, really the start of the Norwegian offshore um, hydrocarbon industry. As I said, it's been operating for 43 years, but uh, in the past two years, we've put uh, an additional three platforms in uh, Ecofisk and in the greater Ecofisk area. Uh, two in 2013, which are on the left side of that top photograph, and one on the Eldfisk uh, development, which isn't shown here. That, those platforms are designed to take us to the next 40 years of production in Norway. So when we talk about data management and data maintenance, we're, we're really looking at a very, very long-term uh, approach. Um, if I bring up this next slide, it shows the Ecofisk field, the greater Ecofisk area in context. And we have about uh, 25 platforms. Uh, they're all linked uh, either by bridges or by a network of pipelines carrying water, uh, gas, oil, telecommunications controls, uh, fiber optics, you name it. There's a, a maze of, of infrastructure underneath that. So that's the context behind our decision in 2009 to implement the smart plant tools. But there were certain other issues that we wanted to resolve. First, like uh, many large companies, we were functionally siloed. Our information management worked in a silo. Our information technology worked in a silo. Projects worked in a silo. Operations worked in a silo. And it made it very time consuming and difficult to get information since we didn't have common databases and common tools. So we wanted to address that. We also are experiencing increasing amounts of data. As I said, we have 25 platforms. The last three platforms we put in had about 450,000 tagged items and 450,000 documents. And those three platforms uh, had about the same volume of data as the previous 22 platforms. So we're really seeing a massive increase in the amount of data, and we expect that trend to continue. We'd also like to move from a document-centered approach, which is our traditional uh, oil field approach, to a data-centered approach. And that requires that we change some processes and change the way we think about data. We also needed to validate all this new information that we're getting. Um, given the volume of data and the importance of having accurate data offshore, we wanted to make sure that we had uh, subjected our data to a, a rigorous validation process. We also want to enable data integration, not just between uh, the smart plant tools themselves, but between the external tools that we use in our uh, engineering process. And we're moving toward a model of integrated operations. As I mentioned, the silos that we have between functions, we're trying to break those down. We're trying to use uh, organizational approaches, people, and technology to give ourselves a, a more common and integrated approach to handling data and uh, recognize what uh, each of the other functions is doing. In terms of business drivers, it's, it's really very simple for us. We want to operate our assets safely, we want to maintain them efficiently, and we want to have accurate data in the event of uh, any offshore emergencies or situations that require rapid response. So it's critically important for us to have the right data available at the right time. Great. Thank you so much, Sean. So, uh, Luciano? You want to maybe uh, share with the audience a little bit what uh, Ian, what drives the ENI activities? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Only a few words to introduce myself. I am in ENI. Uh, since uh, 1981, I am the ICT Technical Scientific Line Manager for Engineering 
Construction and Development Project Department. I work uh, very closely with the other discipline manager in order to achieve the common goal set by our top manager. So, during the past year, our exploration team uh, worked very, very well and discovered very promising resources. 80% of them will expect a startup in the less than seven years. The main project with uh, final investment decision in the next four years are by and large 20. 50% in Africa, the other in Indonesia, Venezuela, Norway, Kazakhstan, and uh, Italy. The four year problem plus problem reserve target is uh, of about 3.5 billion of BOE. Honor to our exploration department, but much more work for our development department. So for this reason, more of the exploration for years investment will be addressed to the project with medium and long term target. See for instance, Arctic or ultra deep project. As I said before, our exploration department worked very well. So uh, by and large, we have 40 major projects uh, to be developed, in particular in Africa, but also in Norway, Kazakhstan, Venezuela, and Far East Indonesia. The target is to increase the production of 500,000 BOE per day by 2017. Last week, so very recently, <laughs> Uh, ENI announced a, a new organizational structure. The new one replaced the divisional model with an integrated operational uh, structure strongly focused on our business. That means that the activity previously managed within an exploration and production, refining and marketing division, and uh, Sindial and Versalis will be redistributed among the following business units. One is the exploration, the other are development, operation, and technology, upstream and downstream and industrial. This will join the existing business unit of midstream and retail gas and power. At the same time, all the staff function will be centralized with significant benefit in terms of efficiency and executional capability. Our new uh, CEO, Descalzi, Mr. Descalzi, in summary commented, the aim of this new organization is to fully leverage all of ENI resources, streamlining structure, avoiding duplication, and transforming ENI into an operational company. This will allow us to respond rapidly and flexibly to the business challenges that we are facing. This is the new organization. But the, taking into consideration the scenario introduced before, since the third quarter of 2012, the organization and process of the development department are undergoing significant change. EMP for years plan for significant investment during the next year, billion of uh, euro, and with more of a doubling startup contribution, mostly deep water and arctic project. And it means that we will need twice as many engineering resources as in 2012. This uh, is why in the first quarter of 2013, ENI acquired uh, Saipem Basistock, a branch of Saipem, and we accelerated the integration of Technomare, which was an ENI company already. So right now we, are, we, uh, we have three engineering apps, in a quarter and engineering Basistock and Technomare in Milan. The, the, the target is uh, to arrange uh, in-house uh, the, the project uh, until the feed. They, uh, all uh, the free apps uh, have to work in an integrated fashion and with a very strong focus on time to market approach. For us, this means for, to further reduce the time to develop our project and to aggressively manage cost and schedule. Okay. When the organizational change and management started, the IT technical scientific infrastructure didn't cover the vertical engineering need because we, we have an owner operator company and not an engineering company. So the target was to review the entire IT technical scientific infrastructure and to ensure that it will cover all the additional needs. In the same time, maintain the, the scope of the owner operator, not engineering contractor. 
So we wanted to maintain this approach and minimizing the CAPEX and driving toward the right level of OPEX because our company, my company is oil and gas company, no IT company. So the cost about the IT must be less. You and I user uh, are geographically distributed and we, they have uh, uh, been working with technical application through the technical scientific web portal and provide cloud science 2000, so many years ago. All the applications are in network and the license are shared among all the actors involved. So the target was also to integrate any engineering in terms of mare in this, in this scenario. With this target in mind, we decided to enhance our uh, IT tank scientific service, adopting integral smart plant cloud solution in order to cover the additional need concerning the use of smart plant enterprise engineering applications, such as smart 3D, smart PNID, smart electrical, and so on. This additional service is available also for the subcontractor involved in our project. <coughs> so we are complete the infrastructure adding to our private cloud, smart plant cloud. For, the, for our user and engineering, Technomare and uh, iQuarter, look at the entire environment as only one environment. Great. Thank you, Luciano. Thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, so in summary, we have a very broad uh, spectrum of, of, of business drivers for, for actually managing uh, engineering information differently, right? It's about information volumes and the correctness, you know, changing or innovating uh, work processes. As Luciano mentioned, doubling engineering capacity or, or integrating new acquisitions. Um, so let's then maybe have a bit more closer look at how the solutions look like. So Sham, if you could maybe take us through ConocoPhillips solution. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the slide that you're seeing now represents the 18 <coughs> deliverables or 18 data sets that we consider required for a typical new build platform in, in Norway. The boxes in blue are the smart plant tools. The boxes in green are uh, not smart plant, but they're integrated with smart plant. And the boxes in black are not yet integrated with smart plant, and they may or may not be in the future. But that represents um, the total data delivery for a, a typical new build platform. So in order to manage these various data sets, we've come up with the solution shown in this slide. And it's a little bit busy, so I'll, I'll just go through it step by step. The uh, boxes in green are the project area. That's essentially the working area for all the data that's received from our contractors. It's received into um, a smart plant operations instance and validated in the VTL. And from there, it goes to two locations. The first is to the operations, and that's the part shown in blue. So operations takes the fully validated, as-built data, and uh, they have their own instance of that, which is essentially a static instance of the, that data. That data can then be replicated into other systems like SAP, which we still use for offshore maintenance purposes and for procurement. The section in orange represents the uh, the shared system between operations and projects. And it too has a replicated full instance of the as-built data, fully validated as-built data. But that data is available to be used by our contractors for modification purposes. So we do a lot of work on existing platforms to um, upgrade them and extend their lives. So we need to have accurate data so that those contractors are, are working from a, a validated set. The, uh, the area highlighted in yellow also represents the hosted solution that we're using uh, for contractors who don't have smart plant. We actually require that all of our modifications contractors use our hosted solution, but we don't require that of our new build contractors. The hosted solution is essentially the same as Intergraph's cloud solution, but uh, the cloud solution wasn't available at the time we devised the system. Okay. So what this uh, setup allows us to do is, uh, well, it gives us a few benefits. The first is that it allows us to support concurrent engineering. So we can have multiple contractors accessing the same data uh, concurrently. And we know that we have control of revision. We know we have control of our own symbols libraries, our seed databases. 
and we know that everyone is using the same version of the tools. It allows us to quickly start up capital projects because we don't have a, an intensive period of gathering data. All the data is available to the people who need it as soon as they need it. We have a higher quality of data, data available, uh, and it's available for a longer time. So we can maintain the higher quality of data over the life of the asset. We also have uh, information more easily accessible to the people who need it, which allows us to respond more quickly to incidents offshore. And we have easier integration with our other data management systems, the ones shown in green and, uh, and uh, black. Uh, so we have other systems, 3D CAD modeling and, uh, and other specialist systems that we need to integrate with SmartPlant. And those uh, tools, we have a lot of them already integrated, but others will come with time. Excellent. Thank you, Sham. Thank you. Luciano, you want to talk a little bit about the ENI solution? <clears throat> okay. Now, I, I would like to, um, to explain you how ENI decided to adopt this solution instead of other solution. So, in order to identify the best solution to cover the additional engineering need, we have shared a very fast track plan. We started last year in April, and uh, the first activity was to identify a business case based on uh, a recent feed project managing now by Technomare, the Cingili project, it was a, a Congo platform. After that, we have agreed with, the, with the Intergraph to arrange a proof of concept inside Intergraph cloud infrastructure, and we have opened this environment to our test users. So we have uh, copied the Licengili project in, uh, in, in the cloud, and uh, our user, Technomar engineering user, access to this uh, environment for one month to, to test uh, the environment. Last but not least, we, we met also Shell, person involved in, uh, in the adoption of Integral Cloud Service by Shell. And after that, in June, we have decided, discussed, and after that, decided, and we had uh, to adopt uh, Integral Solution. The official agreement was signed last January, so very recently. With the support of the next free slide, I, I will try to answer to the, the question why ENI decided to adopt Integral Solution. The Integral slogan connected to one service is you pay as you consume. This is important for all the company, I think, to, to maintain the cost in, in uh, less than the, the, the target imposed by our management. So, the offer consists in a lot of core service, in other words, standard service for a cloud offer, plus additional service in order to configure own cloud environment in the jargon called estate with own company standard. For instance, we start with the configuration of a cloud estate, one for an engineering P and one for Technomare with an I pipeline specification and material management standard. In summary, the main functionality offered by Integral Solution are a secure multi-tenancy authentication authorization control. Each ENI organization, like any quarter Technomare and Engineering MP, reside in its own secure tech bubble and in separate secure network, including storage isolation for each state. This is very important because uh, also the subcontractor access to the, the project. So it's, it's important to maintain the value all the project by the other. A security event monitoring and auditing is available. A very qualified ICT team is available to better configure, manage, and tune each engineering project for a very low cost per project. At the end, a monthly reporting and incident management available too. So a lot of services that a standard cloud uh, uh, service ma must uh, provide to the company. In the first slide, I indicated the main reason on which it was based our choose. The first is, for each project, it can fix the version of each vertical application. 
Furthermore, Integraph is in charge to test the new application version, the bug fixing, and the compliance among all the applications before to publish them in the production environment. If you have to manage this activity in, an, in our solution, you have to spend a lot of time and cost without being sure of having high performance and coherency during the production. In this case, you could have a significant negative impact during the use in production by the user with many incidents to be managed because you have more suppliers that end the same matter, the supply of the hardware and the supply of the software. The second reason concerns the involvement of the contractor subcontractor in managing our project through segregated secure network. This is another very important key point in order to share the company standard, the policy among all the actors involved, and to reduce the time and the cost in ending our engineering project with a noticeable improvement on the information quality. Our, let me say, policy in adjusting to our environment is very hard, so it's not so easy to open this to the subcontractor. In this case, we can do this without uh, granting access to the subcontractor to ENI infrastructure. Furthermore, it grants alignment and consistency between project and company system and repository. This is an, uh, another area of benefit associated with this solution. Furthermore, it can check and monitor the number of each state and project, and a very qualified tell desk and ICT team are available 7 on 7, 24 hours to 24 hours to support our user. In conclusion, the Integra Smart Plan Cloud Service solution is more open, flexible, and easy to manage and monitor in, in our solution. More. Adopting this solution, we have only one supplier in charge to manage hardware and software concerning the same matter. In this case, a supplier that knows in detail how is on software and what should be the best hardware configuration in order to grant the best performance and rapid resolution of the issue in the production. This was a key point in taking our decision to adopt Marplan Cloud Service. Great. Excellent, Luciano. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So, um, I think it's fair to say that uh, these are very innovative solutions, and I think it's also fair to say that both uh, ENI and ConocoPhillips, to a certain degree, have been at the forefront of innovation, like early adopters, if you want. And uh, we, of course, know that, you know, being an early adopter is not always easy, and sometimes there comes some you know, some uh, uh, interesting lessons learned uh, with that. So um, why don't we talk a little bit about lessons learned and where you are today? Okay. <clears throat> well, we uh, obviously had a lot of lessons learned. I wish we didn't have so many lessons learned. But uh, they were valuable lessons, and I, uh, I guess I have to walk a fine line between diplomacy and useful information. But I'll, I'll try and do that. But I do want to emphasize that we did have some challenges. We learned a lot, but we managed to solve them all. And, and at the end of the process, we got the product that we wanted, and we got a robust foundation for future, future growth. But the first thing I'd like to cover is the, the scope and the plan. We had a very ambitious scope and a very ambitious plan. And we essentially tried to do everything at one time to integrate all of these data sets across all of the functions on three projects that were in progress. So we ended up um, with a lot of false starts and a lot of, uh, a lot of wasted effort when it became obvious that the, we had bitten off more than we could chew, right? So the first lesson is you have to do this in a methodical way. Put it in small, easily managed scopes that build on one another and bring the organization along with you. Now, we had an upper management mandate to do this work, but that mandate didn't go down into the people who are actually doing the work. And so we, you know, we uh, had this, this vision of what we wanted to do, but we needed to take it slowly, bring the organization along with us, and build on a, a track record of success as we went along. We also had some, uh, some lessons about our interaction with Intergraph. Intergraph has very good salesmen. Sometimes they sell things that don't actually exist in the software. And uh, we, we planned on uh, some of those features. 
uh, that was a mistake because it took a lot longer than we thought for those features actually to be implemented. So part of that lesson, going back to the scope and plan, is plan where your software actually is and not where it may be in the future. Uh, the other thing in our relationship with Intergraph was just the resources. Uh, at first, the resources that we had were really more attuned to a, a traditional contractor-client relationship. When we asked them to do things, they did them, uh, coding and bug fixes, things like that. But that's not what we needed. We were embarking on a new program, so we needed collaborators. We needed people who could work with us to solve problems and implement solutions. So uh, once we got that understanding with Intergraph uh, and we got the right people, things went much more smoothly. We had a really um, a much, much more successful implementation after that. Okay? Third lesson learned deals with EPC contractors. Uh, EPC contractors have their own systems that they're used to using and that they prefer to use. So it's important to bring your EPC contractors along uh, when, you, when you implement solutions like this. Uh, generally, the more experienced contractors, the ones you really want to work with, are the more embedded in their own systems, and it's harder to break them out into new systems. So you have to do uh, kind of a two-tiered job. One is to sell the benefits of the intelligent data systems that you're trying to, to set up, and the other is, from a contractual basis, to make sure that the data management uh, toward intelligent data is embedded in the contracts. Uh, the other lesson we learned was around our own internal processes, what I'm calling governance on this slide. ConocoPhillips um, has traditionally been a document-centered company, and moving toward a data-centered company is, is a worthy goal and something we want to do, but our processes lag that. We still review and approve on a document basis, not a data-centric basis. Uh, as I already mentioned, um, the decision making was very fragmented when we tried to do this. So um, in ConocoPhillips, uh, one group, one function would go up to upper management and ask for, for a tool and would be approved or, or not based on that one's function's requirement. And that's not the way to implement an intelligent data solution across multiple functions. So what we ended up doing <clears throat> was uh, forming a steering committee comprised of information management information technology, projects, and operations, so that we had decision-making in that uh, unified functional body. And that made it much easier for us to sell the, uh, the implementation of intelligent data and to bring the organization along with us. And finally, uh, we learned a lot about people and organization. The, comp the complex scope of this work required that we really redefine some of the roles we had in the company. Smart plant, um, requires a different skill set than the guys answering the help desk and helping people set up printers, right? We need different skills, we need different outlook, we need different capabilities. So we need to get that level of competence up in our own organizations. And uh, we consider Intergraph a key partner in doing that. So if we had to do it all over again, based on the lessons learned uh, that we had in the previous uh, four or five years, we identified a few success factors. First, you really have to have your requirements well-defined. So you know exactly what you're designing to. It seems obvious, right? But in, a, in the heat of the moment, you have a vision of how things w work or should work, but they don't necessarily accord with what's there. So it's important to get alignment uh, between what you want and uh, what you really have to do. We have to have documented engineering processes that reflect a data-centric approach as opposed to a document-centric approach. As I mentioned, you have to have clear EPC contract requirements that deal with uh, the transmission of smart data. Your project management team has to understand the benefits of data delivery and understand that data is part of the, of the project delivery just as much as uh, the platform itself. The data is just as important as the physical hardware and that's a message that has to be reinforced uh, on an almost daily basis to the organization. We make data delivery part of our contracts in terms of our penalty and, and uh, milestone structures in the contracts now. Um, we want to have integration between our various functions at a very early stage. Uh, as I mentioned, we can't have functional silos anymore if you're trying to develop integrated data for the life of an asset. So that requires that we, uh, we look at all of our processes and all of our organization. Part of that 
again, is organizational change management. Make sure that we are managing the transition from a document-centered organization to a data-centered organization properly. As I said, we need competence. We need people who are well-trained in uh, what, not only what to do, but why they're doing it. People who can sell the program and who can uh, champion the program within these organizations. And we need our operations group to plan early how they're going to receive the data. Uh, in Norway, the transition to smart plant was really driven by capital projects. And the operations, they saw the advantage of intelligent data, but they really didn't uh, start structuring their own systems to receive intelligent data from the project group until fairly late in the game. And that has to happen much, much earlier if you're going to have uh, uh, long-term success. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sean. So, Luciano, do you want to kind of uh, quickly summarize where you stand? Yeah, Mirko. So, where we are? As already uh, said, uh, the agreement was signed last uh, January, and uh, we have submitted a global work order based on the business case arranged in order to cover the global need for the free, next free year. With this approach, a significant discount was applied by Integrate to us. After that, we started to put in place the organization internally in, uh, in ENI organization in Integrate to manage all the, the, all the activity. In other words, we, we have identified the focal point in Basisto. We have identified the same in Technomare and in Equota. And uh, we have agreed among all the actors involved uh, all the procedure uh, to, be, to be respected. For each organization, uh, we have a focal point. And uh, each month, uh, or when it needs, the engineering MP or technomare focal point sent to integrate mailbox the template with the user to be uh, profiled and all the licenses uh, to be activated for the next month. These licenses will be uh, subtracted by the license pool purchased in January with the global uh, work order. Furthermore, I take care personally to save the licenses information into a ENI repository in order to arrange the internal reporting. So I can check and monitor the number of each engineering project with a detailed monthly reporting, cost included, so it can also grant to the partner a detailed, clear, and auditable report of cost concerning the participated project. Is, more, is this most important for our, for our partner? In this display slide, it encloses a screenshot of the user of the reporting, internal reporting. The first project uh, inside the cloud started in January. It was a feed project managed by an engineer MP. The, the, the project uh, called uh, Zaba Zaba uh, is a FAPSL project in Nigeria. The project is still ongoing. Uh, you can see the number of this project in the display the slide. By, by and large, we have uh, more than 120 PNID with six, eight PNID CAD operators. Concerning the 3D CAD model, more than 1,100 line, by and large, one, 145 process equipment and 11 3D CAD operator. Globally, uh, 55 users are involved and profiled uh, subcontractor included. Uh, India subcontractor is, uh, in, is uh, uh, joined in this project. Concerning the project, the, the current status, we have three engineering project uh, uh, managed by any engineer in P. The first is Zaba Zaba, as already said. The other is a coal oil terminal uh, project. And uh, the, the third is a water treatment, is a ENI internal project in order to standardize uh, the process utility modules. Concerning Technomare, we have a 65 profile user and a free activated project. C. Bianca Luzella is offshore platform, Luango two offshore platform in Congo, and Nene five offshore platform, they also in Congo.
This is the correct Excellent. start. That was it. Okay. <clears throat> so then I think there's only one remaining question that maybe uh, could be of interest to be discussed. Um, so I think it became obvious that there's, uh, there's a whole range of uh, important factors that need to be taken into consideration uh, to ensure uh, true success. And what we'd be interested to know is actually where are you going from, uh, from here? I'm, I'm sure you're not done yet, right, nope. Sam? No, we're not done. All right, so what's next? Uh, clearly, uh, from the various business units, ConocoPhillips has made a, a commitment to the smart plant tools, and we intend to uh, try and take that as far as we can. We'll hope that the software can grow with us and our tools and processes can adapt to this data-centric approach. But some of the things that we really need to do in the near term are update our data for operations and engineering numbering systems to reflect this new data-centric approach that we're, we're trying to advance within the company. We need a strict management of change to ensure that um, everyone is working from the same script and that we don't have some, uh, some functions going in one direction and other functions going in a different direction. So it's very important to maintain that management of change. We need to develop, as I mentioned, new processes for the review and approval of documents uh, to suit the data-centric uh, approach as opposed to a document-centric one. We need to talk about uh, the new roles and networks that Smart Plant requires uh, that are going to be different from the way we've done business in the past. We need to make our expectations to our contractors and suppliers crystal clear about the need for intelligent data. We need uh, increased communication, of course, and training. And uh, I guess I haven't really mentioned the word collaboration, but collaboration is the key to a successful implementation of, of any kind of a new data management system especially as one as complicated as what we've attempted to do in Norway. So collaboration really is the key, and uh, breaking down these functional boundaries is essential to successful implementation. Um, and the, the other thing is that you have to paint this picture of where the value is in intelligent data and intelligent data management and sell that picture through your entire organization. It's not enough to convince upper management that this is the way to go need to convince the people who are actually doing the work that there is value in intelligent data and that they should be on board with our attempt to move toward this data-centric approach. Really, for ConocoPhillips, it all boils down to this, this one slide. In the past, we got what we got. If the contractor said, this is what we'll give you, then we accepted it. But we can't do that anymore. I mean, we've had some very well-publicized uh, big events here in the Gulf of Mexico with, uh, with BP and with Condo. And it shows you that as an operator, we are ultimately responsible for what's on our platforms. So we have to have accurate data. We have to have the data we need to make intelligent decisions about what's going on offshore. So we're really moving from a getting what we need approach, or sorry, getting what we get approach to getting what we need. And note that that is getting what we need, not getting what we want, because you know, you can want everything, but what do you actually need? It requires us to take a good hard look at our own processes and our own data requirements and take out what's superfluous and leave only what is really required for us to operate safely, maintain our assets over a long period of time, and respond to uh, offshore emergencies and uh, unforeseen circumstances. Thank you, Sam. Luciano, so what are your next... Uh steps finish ah yes to finish <clears throat> okay so to finish uh, i would like to to say uh, the the next activity because all is not finished all can be announced and uh, when uh, we agree that the, the with integra to adopt uh, this uh, this service solution uh, I said that uh, we must learn together in handling this, uh, this, uh, this matter. And uh, it's my opinion uh, that I would like to take this year to consolidate the, the environment, the cloud environment, to uh, configure the cloud environment dedicated to ENI organization as ENI want, and to start, let me say, at the beginning next year with the consolidated environment. So concerning the ongoing experience in the cloud, uh, we have defined uh, uh, some activity together with Inter to do uh, by the next uh, September. 
The first one is uh, the project IT management. The cloud uh, core service is based on the concept one estate equal to one product. Is this uh, good if your project is big and if you, you would like to manage the project at the beginning uh, up to the operation? In this case, we would like to manage the defeat project. So it's not a very big project. Uh, we would like to manage more projects in one state. So it needed to have all the functionality and reporting uh, now available for the state at the project level. So also the segregation of the uh, access and so on and the latency must be addressed to the project and not uh, to the states, is the, the first point. The second point is related to the handover. So we would like to uh, configure the uh, handover module in, uh, inside the cloud, the Smart Plan Foundation, Smart Plan for Normal Operation, in, in the cloud. We would like to configure uh, this environment as we already done uh, in-house with the uh, Lichengili project. So we, we know uh, as we want to, uh, to have configured the, this environment, so we would like to manage the same in the cloud. This is the uh, two main uh, activity uh, to do by the, the, the September. The, 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 the aim is to facilitate the reduced time and cost and wrong information in collecting data document model from an engineering project environment to ENI headquarters repository that is based on the Smart Plan Foundation. Uh, the, the, our, our, um, uh, our database is called the DBIMP, all basing on the ENI guideline, obviously, and the standard procedure. For this reason, we are thinking and working as an integrated team, not only ENI person in a quarter technomar engineering, but also with Integraf in order to achieve the common goal. And uh, as uh, I strongly I strongly think that the, the, the team is the key point of the, of the resolution of, uh, the, and to keep the, 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 the target and the goal. Uh, I would like to a special thing to Integraf uh, Italy team and my colleague in Aquater, Technomare, and Basisto. Thank you very much for your attention <coughs> and passion. Thank you, Luciano. Sham, Luciano, thank you so much for having taken the time to be here with us this morning. Thank you for having woken up this morning so early after that uh, very nice party. With that, as Luciano said, finish. Um, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference, safe travels, and hopefully see you next year. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>